Elliot Jacobson here, and today I'm going to present 14 ways to beat the house that are not blackjack card counting. So I have a PowerPoint presentation ready to go, so let's just get right to it. So, all right, 14 legal ways to beat the house. So the first thing that I have to remind you, as usual, is we are not talking about voodoo methods. We're not talking about progressions or timing methods or leaving um, after you have won or lost a certain amount, identifying hot and cold um, slot machines or table games, nothing like that. This is all, um, all of these methods are science-based math and fact-based methods that have been used before to beat the house. So let's get right to it. Now we're not talking about um, card counting blackjack, but that doesn't mean we can't count some novelty games. Anytime a game is dealt from a shoe or a deck so that multiple rounds are dealt between shuffles, it may, it may be the case that um, the edge changes in, in a fashion that um, you can actually identify when you have the edge over the house. And this goes for variants of blackjack, like Spanish 21 or Superfund 21, variants of Baccarat, like 7-Up um, Baccarat that was around a few years back, some novelty games. So um, card counting is a method. We're not talking about card counting blackjack, and it does work on some other games. Just uh, in the same fashion, card counting works on side bets. So we can talk about card counting blackjack or baccarat side bet. Some of the most vulnerable over the years have been the slingo side bet for blackjack, the pairs bet and your way egalite bet for baccarat. So um, certainly if you are a casino with one of these highly vulnerable side bets, you need to pay attention to people who um, may be exploiting those. And if you're a player, um, you want to be careful to shop for a good bet. All right, well, hole carding is certainly the uh, most common power method that's used by advantage players to beat the house. And this simply means that the player is seeing one of the dealer's hole cards or down cards, cards they weren't meant to see prior to making a decision. So blackjack, there's lots, plenty of ordinary hole carding that still is taking place. Um, we're also, in, in some sense, I want to put this together with a method called next carding or first carding, and that's where the top card is exposed from the deck. So you may see the top card as the dealer is just holding the cards or for some other um, reason that card is exposed. So that can also be considered a brand of hole carding. We can also hole card novelty games, including most famously three card poker, which has been hole carded since about the year, oh, I don't know, early 2000s sometime, um, and may have been the first novelty game to really get exploited that way in, in a big way. Okay, next is edge sorting. Um, made famous by Phil Ivey, this method was used um, for decades before Phil Ivey ever used it, and I'm certain it's still being used today. Essentially, we're talking about looking at the back of a card and seeing if the card has an asymmetry in it, and then what we need is the ability to get the cards rotated one direction or another so that we can make use of um, the information that, I sent, that asymmetry uh, may provide in allowing us to determine whether we are talking about a high card or a low card or some other grouping of cards that's important to the game we're playing. All right, so um, it is of dubious legal um, sta standing right now, and in some jurisdictions, you may be fine if this is something you want to use. In other jurisdictions, you may find yourself up against a court challenge and they're gonna get their money back. So do beware if this is something that you're considering. Next is collusion or card sharing. And this is simply means we are going to have a team at the table and tell everybody the cards we're holding. And um, if in some games, knowing everybody's cards at the table is enough to get an edge over the house. It used to be in a single deck um, blackjack pays three to two game. You could use a method called depth charging, which is where everybody would bet um, small amounts and a team would fill up the table and the person at third base would bet a large amount and the person at third base would use all of the information from seeing how the uh, hands played out 
before him and having the information for all those cards allowed the person at third base to get the edge. Caribbean stud very famously um, was beaten using a um, collusion system or card sharing system called MAK, Pagao Tiles and other novelty games. Some of these games you can get well in excess of a 50% edge over the house by sharing the information of what you're holding in your hand. Um, details on my website, advancedadvantageplay.com. All right, shuffle tracking. So shuffle tracking is simply where we are paying attention to the shuffle procedure. And if that procedure is particularly weak, for example, doesn't have a strip or doesn't have a turn or is, sing is a single pass, riffle and restack or many other types of shuffle procedures that can be uh, tracked, then we could follow a slug of cards that's important to the game we're playing through that shuffle procedure. In blackjack, we're looking for a slug of high cards and aces. Um, and we want to know where that that um, is after the shuffle. But we're also talking about um, ace sequencing as a form of shuffle tracking, which is simply being able to follow aces through the shuffle procedure. So we need a strip um, in the shuffle in order to de defeat ace sequencing and looking for a game that doesn't have that strip can get a huge edge. Ace sequencing is simply following aces through the shuffle by means of what are called key cards. Next is a card location. So we like to know when aces are going to come out. That was ace sequencing, but it turns out no matter what card we see, if we can identify a card and know exactly where that card is, and um, we're talking about the exact location of that card, then we can, in blackjack, drive that card either to a player hand or the dealer's hand through selective uh, strategic playing. In Baccarat, there is a strategy, a known card strategy, as soon as that one single card comes into the window of the next six cards, so it's going to come out the next hand, then we can use that information to know whether to bet on the player or banker and get a big edge over the house. So knowledge of a single card, but knowing the exact location that card is. It's what we're talking about with card location. The next method is shuffler mechanics. Um, this is actually understanding how shufflers work, whether it's a continuous shuffle machine or an automatic shuffler I didn't include here. But essentially, whenever you are using a shuffler, then that shuffler will have both mechanical defects and programming defects that in some cases allow you to know or have information about the order of cards that are coming out or even about a specific card. So it may be the case that, that even the shuffler makes a certain sound that allows you to determine um, if you understand the mechanics inside what it has done and that may allow you to follow certain cards through the machine. So um, shuffler mechanics, there is some written about this if you go out there and Google uh, do a little bit of a search. You can find some articles where people have talked about beating automatic shufflers outright. Um, it is also possible to do ordinary blackjack card counting against certain shufflers, um, but this video is not about ordinary blackjack card counting. All right, loss rebates. Um, well, loss rebates are uh, how Don Johnson beat the house playing blackjack in Atlantic City in 2013, I believe. But loss rebates can be used against any game. And in fact, out of this list I have here, blackjack, baccarat, craps, and roulette, craps with high odds is absolutely the best game um, to play a loss rebate strategy. What you want is a lot of variance so you can hit your win or loss exit point quickly. So getting a large rebate percentage um, and playing a highly volatile game for a short period of time and you can get a big edge over the house. Next, we are talking about marketing and exploiting marketing. Uh, marketing, so the way marketing works theoretically is that every player plays a game and based on the games they've played, the amount they've wagered in the house edge, uh, the duration of their play, you can compute what's called the T-win or theoretical win for the uh, house based on the assumption that um, the person who is playing is an ordinary straight player. Well, if you're not an ordinary straight player, then 
you may um, have a strategy that allows you to more or less break even with the house. Meanwhile, you will be getting all of the perks that the casino is offering you um, in marketing, which may include things like cash back, promotional chips, show up money, room, food, beverage, travel, giveaways, drawing, hot seats, all of these things. Um, and in some cases, you may find marketing has uh, made a promotional rule change, for example, offering two to one blackjack or triple up instead of double up um, as a, a potential rule change. So marketing is very good at getting things wrong. Um, they don't always fully understand the math. And sometimes if you're careful, you can get a huge edge over the house just by exploiting the marketing department. And next, we're talking about beating slots. A lot of people think you can't beat slot machines, that they are a foolproof game, but that is not true. There are lots of ways to beat slot machines. Um, one of the ones that um, was made famous, there's a book on it, is playing against what are called must hit by progressives. So a progressive is a payout that increases uh, systematically as more and more wagers are put into the slot machine. Well, there are some slots where that progressive is required to pay out on or before um, a certain amount. And so by simply walking around a casino, you can identify when those progressives are um, nearly forced to pay out and you can get a big edge, uh, ordinary progressives as well. There are things called accumulator slots and these are slots where as you play them, certain um, items, you earn certain tokens or benefits, and when you accumulate a certain number of those, you go into a bonus game or get a certain bonus payout. So there are players who abandoned uh, slot machines with some of these um, tokens or accumulators uh, at a high enough level so that if you find that game, you can get an edge by playing against it. And of course, there are some games that have just bad math and there are ones that have errors. For example, the wrong pay table was programmed in. Um, so people have exploited slots in many different ways, um, more than what I've listed here, in fact. Uh, roulette, well, you know, every game should be beatable. Um, roulette is certainly beatable by loss rebate, but it is otherwise a very difficult game to beat. In the past, it has been beaten by um, people who have identified biased roulette wheels. The wheels are getting much better these days and it's much harder to find one that is sufficiently biased that you can beat it. But um, there are other places where it is still legal to use a, a computer or a device and there are ways of timing the wheel based on using these devices that can help you predict uh, at least with some accuracy, all you need to exclude are two or three numbers and you can get a big edge over the house. Um, and then there are jurisdictional roulette variants. So finding a jurisdiction internationally, there are certainly some here in the United States where they don't use a true roulette wheel, but possibly some other type of machinery that may be exploitable or have um, tolerances that don't live up to the same as those for uh, modern roulette wheels. Um, but it is certainly possible to find biased devices. All right, next, video poker. Well, you knew we were gonna get there, so um, there's been lots of ways used. Um, for the longest time, you could just go into plenty of different casinos and find games that um, paid out more than 100% with perfect um, strategy. It's very hard to find those anymore. And when you do find them, they're at the lowest denominations. But certainly finding a game that returns greater than 100% and knowing perfect strategy on that game is a way to beat the house. There are other locations, uh, this is probably a lot more common, where a game is set at a high level, for example, returning 99% uh, percent or higher, and the casino assumes its typical patron may play a faulty strategy, so they may be a 95% player. And based on that, the casino may give, for example, 2% or 3% back in comps to their video poker players, which for the perfect player will put them well over 100% return. 
Just like slots, there's also um, vulturing that goes on. There's something called an ultimate X game. These are games where in a certain state, there are multipliers left on the game so that if you play a game in that state and you happen to get a winning hand, the win for that hand will be multiplied by a certain amount. So there are people who will roam the floors of casinos looking for these ultimate X games with multipliers left on them. That is absolutely being done today. And just like slots, there are progressives on some video poker games. And if you know the uh, payouts at which the video poker becomes greater than 100%, then you can simply go looking for progressives that have been left in a state that is player positive. Next, we're talking about sports betting, right? And sports betting is absolutely a way to beat the house. Um, I will say that in my own experience, I've known some people who have written computer programs that have helped them beat the house using um, sports betting. And these are just some of the top people in the world. There are syndicates around. There are people who want to hire programmers who understand uh, certain statistical methods. Essentially, what you're doing is you are um, creating an intelligent or a piece of artificial intelligence that is getting better odds, predicting better odds than the odds makers themselves. And then you simply go around looking for the games or, or um, the sporting events where you can get those odds um, that are player positive and those will be the ones you wager on. The um, most common use of this is in horse racing and that goes on still to this day. There are horse racing syndicates that are constantly looking for a better piece of software to one up their competitors. All right, so that is it. Um, so I just wanna finish this video by telling you what is absolutely not a legal way to beat the house um, other than card counting, all right? So poker, poker, uh, there are plenty of very, very good poker players, but not a single one of them is beating the house. They are all paying the rake, just like any other ordinary player. And so the casino is making money off those players, even if they are playing profitably. Um, skilled shooting at craps. There's no such thing as a skilled shooter. There is a lucky shooter. There's a shooter who thinks, ah, I'm very skilled tonight because I won and I was less skilled yesterday because I lost, but there is not a skilled shooter. Um, there are some people who have exploited slot machine and video poker machine malfunctions. For example, certain button pushes generating um, false payouts. Again, that is not a um, way to beat the house uh, that I would call a legal way. So if you want to use a method like that, you have to beware because you essentially machine malfunction voids all play. So you are taking advantage of the machine malfunction. And technically speaking, your play is voided and um, taking advantage of that may have legal consequences. Um, people also in marketing have done something called multi-carding. This is where they will fake multiple identities and get lots of different players' cards. So they can attempt to swap in and out these player cards depending on the results playing a given slot machine or video poker game. Essentially, they want to book all their wins on one card and all their losses on another. If you can book a lot of losses on a card, then the casino may view all those losses as deserving of extra compensation to that player from the marketing department. So you might find by doing this, you get to keep your wins and your losses, because they're so extreme, get even more marketing support. Um, and I guess there's other ways. I'm not that familiar with exactly what goes on with this. All I know is that um, in some jurisdictions, this has been prosecuted uh, as a felony for uh, identity theft. And finally, as I started this video with anything that's voodoo is not a legal way to beat the house other than card counting. So voodoo, no. All right, everybody. This is Elliot Jacobson saying so long for now.